there's your problem. Well, hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. I'm Richard. This is Lap of the World and yeah, we are going to uh, to talk a little bit about the uh, NSX's uh, first generation NSX's cooling system today. Uh, for those of you who pay attention to my track feature videos, you'll remember a couple of occasions this year, once at Waterford Hills and again at Dakota County Technical College, where I actually had some kind of thermal issues curtail my fun. Now, in both cases, I largely attribute that to the kind of high RPM but low relative speed driving that you find on super technical courses like those. However, after in, uh, in kind of looking around and inspecting my car a little bit, I believe I may have found an exacerbating factor with the condition of my stock radiator. Now, the NSX's cooling system as a whole is what I would call fairly robust for a streetcar. Uh, but that said, you can find the thermal limit of it if you try hard enough. I've just said I've, in addition to those two times this year, I've also found the limit at uh, Road Atlanta in August at a Porsche Club event after a 45 minute session trying to chase down a uh, 944 turbo race car. I did have to abandon that pursuit because the temperature gauge started to creep up a little bit. If you also follow, uh, as kind of another data point, if you also follow best motoring, and if you don't follow best motoring, what are you doing? Um, <laughs> You'll recall one of their, uh, possibly a couple of their supercar battles, I believe at Twin Ring Motegi, where the inimitable Gonsan driving an NA2 Type R NSX was desperately trying to stay ahead of a couple of Lamborghinis, I believe, a Murcielago and a Gallardo Superleggera. And he ran into some overheating issues and that was a Type R press car uh, that was presumably immaculately maintained with a like new condition radiator uh, that had not been beaten up anywhere near to the extent that mine has. Um, so that said, today we are going to do something about that and we are going to replace my radiator. Uh, one other note on the stock radiators, I have not had this issue, so grain of salt, but I've been told by people who I think are fairly clever and who track their cars a lot as well, that the uh, over time or eventually the plastic end caps on the stock radiators can become problematic. Uh, so just kind of bear that in mind if you decide that you're going to, uh, you know, potentially begin to use your NSX enthusiastically. But that said, what we are doing today is replacing the radiator on my NSX with something that is not a stock radiator. Let me show you what I have. I'll be going back with a Koyo brand drop-in replacement radiator from one of my favorite NSX vendors, Science of Speed out of Arizona. In addition to the radiator, I'll also be putting in one of Science of Speed's own proprietary radiator screens to help prevent the kind of uh, degradation, uh, fin degradation that I've seen on my original radiator. Now, I did explore some other options before settling on putting the Koyo in the car. Uh, Mishimoto makes a similar on paper product. Um, you also have the, well, the OEM part and then you have massive radiators who makes a who make an application for the NSX. Uh, and I, the Koyo appeared to me to be more available than the Mishimoto at the time that I ordered it. Uh, cost was comparable and I could get it from a vendor that I enjoy working with. Uh, the uh, massive option was tempting, but I think it would frankly be overkill and the cost increase was significant. Uh, you know, I have a friend who is uh, sponsored by Massive out in Arizona. Uh, hi, Jim. Uh, he runs one in his uh, uh, Time Attack twin turbo monstrosity of an NSX and has no thermal issues at all with that car in the Arizona summers. Uh, so it would certainly get the job done. But again, for my application with a stock motor and stock cooling system otherwise, I don't think I need that much. Uh, the OEM, again, a new OEM radiator with all the fins in, intact would certainly be in a, a vast improvement over what's in the car right now. However, there was that question mark about the plastic end caps being problematic over time. That's something I'd rather not fiddle with. You know, I'll kind of, uh, you know, I'll, I'll uh, <laughs> you know, quit while I'm ahead on that regard. Uh, so we're going to say goodbye to plastic end caps with it for a, uh, in favor of a full metal design. But, Ended up going with the Koyo again, kind of because of cost. It was around $400 at the time of this video. Uh, a little bit less if you buy from Science of Speed and you're an NSX Club member. Uh, it was available from a vendor that I enjoy working with. And um, it seems by all accounts, it is the least fiddly to install 
and it certainly more than gets the job done when it comes to actually cooling the car. So let's jump in into the actual uninstall install process and we'll take it from there. Remember to drain the coolant from the car before you start. That done, the first step is to find a substitute hood prop as the factory prop is attached to one of the radiator brackets. Hood secure, it's time to decouple the radiator hoses from the car. You'll want a drain pan here to avoid any mess from residual coolant. Next, remove the upper radiator brackets via the four 12 millimeter bolts. Detach the fan resistor from the radiator by removing the two 10 millimeter bolts. And finally, undo the connector to the fan. You should now be able to just pull the radiator straight up and out of the car with relative ease. With the radiator out, undo the four 10 millimeter bolts and remove the fan and shroud assembly. Now is a good time to take a moment and clean off the top of the lower support where debris can accumulate. Reassembly then begins with attaching the fan to the new radiator, taking great care not to touch the fins or over tighten any bolts in the aluminum. Pleasantly, the Koyo radiator came with its own hardware, so I was able to discard my somewhat crusty original bolts. With the fan attached, you should then be able to simply place the new radiator in the car using the original lower mounting holes. If you are also installing a screen, simply tilt it back a couple of degrees and slide the screen in front, making sure it drops all the way behind the lip on the lower support. Now it's just a matter of replacing the upper brackets, reattaching the resistor, plugging the fan back in, and reconnecting the coolant hoses. And with very little other ado, we now have the new radiator in the car. I'll give Koyo a solid five out of five Rees of installation. I'm not sure I've ever had anything advertised as drop-in quite be so literal uh, <laughs> as this was. And also kudos to Science of Speed their screen also dropped in just as easily as their included instructions suggested that it should. Uh, props again to SOS for making my customer experience easy as always. Uh, it's always great to deal with those guys, so uh, thanks again. Couple of quick notes. You may have noticed that when I removed the old radiator, the old radiator hoses came with it, the large hoses that connect to the uh, tubes that go into the car. Uh, that's by design and that will they, uh, they will remain with the old radiator for reasons that will become apparent in subsequent videos. Uh, also, yes, I know my two uh, uh, upper radiator brackets are rusty AF, and unfortunately they shall remain so for at least a little while longer. I just have other, uh, other avenues and things on which I need to spend my time and money. Uh, with only 2,500 or so subscribers, I'm not making those fat YouTube stacks, so... Uh, <laughs> Ah, so yeah, so go buy a t-shirt, link to my Teespring store in the description. But uh, shameless merch plug aside, if you would like them to look less janky sooner than that, and you have some that are made out of a material that, for instance, won't rust, I'm happy to feature your product in exchange for making my own NSX look less janky. But being a goober aside, uh, <laughs> I, uh, I this was an easy job. Now, it was an easy job in a vacuum because I didn't go through the part about draining and refilling and then bleeding the coolant system, which is non-trivial on, on an NSX. And we'll get to that again in a future video. But for today, we're done. That was, I find some wood to knock on, but that was relatively easy. Uh, <laughs> so hopefully it, uh, it remains that way. And hopefully now we can have more fun at upcoming track events without uh, being too concerned about our uh, temperature needle going anywhere. It shouldn't. But with all that said, I'm Richard, this is Lap of the World, and I will see you guys in the next video, if not at the track. And have a Merry Christmas in the meantime, or other holiday as it applies to you.